Hello and welcome to Stampscaping 101. I haven't done a video for a while, but I thought it was time to get around to that again. I've been working on some new designs, and those should be in production pretty soon. But it's time to do some stamping again, and one of the things that I've been doing a lot over this last, I don't know, maybe 12-month period is experimenting with a lot of different um, surface and media combinations. I've been using a lot of the iridescent types of papers, and one of the most dynamic uh, kind of new surfaces that I've been using for me to stamp on are foils, okay? And I've talked about kind of the usage of foils and this generally non-conventional type of stamping surface, uh, surface a lot over this last year when doing those different projects, but I haven't isolated um, kind of the uh, different characteristics of the different media that have been tried on here and uh, the compatibility with not only the different brands of foils but sometimes even the different colors of foils believe it or not. So um, the general usage of foils can be, I, I don't know, they can, it can kind of be, uh, I don't know, grouped into one I don't know, general type of process as far as compatibility goes, you know, the different types of materials that you can use with all the different um, foils, okay? You can group them all together and approach them that way with certain brands, okay? Okay, now, specifically, what that means is if I'm using something like... Um, a stays on or a generally a solvent type of ink. It doesn't have to be the stays on brand uh, line, you know, the Sukuneko stays on. But those types of inks generally can stamp on anything, okay, in terms of impressions, okay, on it. Uh, here's a stays on pigment ink right here, okay. I can take a, an image and then those can be stamped on any of these surfaces right here with no problem. That's what those types of solvent inks are made for stamping on non-porous surfaces, you know, as well as porous surfaces, okay? So you can use it with really kind of, I don't know, incompatible media um, or surfaces that are compatible with other types of things like dye-based inks, hybrid inks, pigment inks, um, alcohol inks, etc., okay? When you start moving into these non-porous surfaces, and what I mean by that is, you know, when you look at these kind of an, from a microscopic kind of standpoint, you won't see a bunch of these little pores in the surface like you will with like a matte paper or something like that, something that's going to be a more absorb, absorbing for uh, specifically wet media, okay? Now, I'm doing this video because I've had, you know, some comments periodically um, <clears throat> upon posting uh, a scene or something like that on Facebook, and someone will say, uh, you know, no matter what I've tried, okay, my media is just never drying, okay? Now, one of the things, if they just see kind of the finished result and don't watch one of these videos, they'll know, you know, that, you know, when I'm doing these videos, I'm saying, okay, so you have to specifically use something that's going to dry on these types of surfaces. So a lot of times people, if I say something like, okay, I use the Brilliance Pigment Ink, okay, that's a certain line and... With most types of media, okay, if I see, someone says they use a dye-based ink, you can pretty much use any type of brand of dye-based ink, any line of dye-based ink for those types of purposes. But when it comes to unconventional surfaces like foils, um, a lot of the iridescent papers, um, vellum or something like that, sometimes when I use a Brilliance ink, which is a specifically designed ink, um, to dr that's designed to dry on, they, I think they originally designed it to dry on glossy cardstock, okay? Something that's less porous than um, a matte cardstock and something that can dry, um, air dry or be heat set very quickly, okay? That's going to be different than another type of pigment ink. Most other pigment inks are oil based, okay? And they dry by absorption and evaporation, okay? But when you get surfaces like a foil that's not going to have the pores in it, you're not going to have any of the absorption factor um, happening or just very little, okay? So even when you try to heat set some of the inks, they'll just never heat set or they will to an extent, but they'll still be kind of slippery because they're oil-based and it's just like a puddle of oil sitting on the surface of like a 
piece of plastic or glass, you know, that would be kind of the, I don't know if it's the equivalent, but that's my analogy of it, okay, with certain types of oils. Okay, so <clears throat> using the right types of media with these types of surfaces, okay. Okay, now let's get into the surfaces, and I won't do tests on all of this because this would be like a one-hour video or something like that, but, okay, there's a couple different types of um, uh, foils that I've been using, okay? This is one of the brands that I recommend for the silver and gold one, and I just got a red one, too, because it was, I don't know, relatively inexpensive. But I chose my foils to stamp on because of the, the price of them, okay? I don't want to be paying, you know, a dollar a sheet for some sort of um, surface. Just in general, I did buy some very expensive glow-in-the-dark ones recently, but those things are so specific that, you know, I was willing to give it a shot and give it a test. Yeah. But something like, you know, gold, silver foils and whatnot, I don't want to pay a whole lot for it. And these ones right here, there's 60 sheets, full-size sheets, and they run about between anywhere from 13 to about $17, I'm finding. They might be going up in price a little bit, but it's not too bad. But I have seen different types of foils that are $1 per full-size sheet out here. This one's 60 sheets, and it's a very high-quality foil for, like I said, it's, it's anywhere between $15 and $17. I bought the, the red foil um, equivalent from Gift Boutique. I think it was like $13 or something like that. It was, you know, I don't know. It was low enough to get me to pull the trigger on it and buy it, okay? But here's another brand that I have been using a lot, and it's very accessible, uh, at least in the U.S., and that's by Recollections, okay? And they're found at your Michaels online or in-store. My local Michaels usually has this in stock on the shelf. This one's the five-color uh, multicolor jewel tone foil. And then I have another um, pack that's 25 sheets, five of each sheet of this primary color. So it's like, I don't know, yellow or gold, red, green, blue. It's kind of an aqua blue. And, and, and there's one other color. I forgot what it is. Those are two packs. Okay, and the price for these ones retails for about, I think it's $5.99, so $6.00 for 25 sheets, but it's always on sale there, you know. There's a buy one, get one, 50% off usually deal. I've seen these ones as low as $3.33, and again, it's for 25 sheets. Okay, and uh, there is one other recollections pack, and it is of the rainbow holographic version of the foils. Let me see, here it is right here. Here's a piece of it right here. I was doing some tests on it earlier. Very dynamic, one color, 25 sheets, okay? Uh, usually when there's a buy one, get one free, I buy one pack, you know, at regular price, and I'll buy, you know, the other type of pack. I think I've gone through a couple packs uh, at this point in time of, maybe not the rainbow holographic one because you get 25 sheets, but I think I've gone through a couple of the jewel tone packs. This is my second pack right here, so I've been using it quite a bit. Okay, but let's talk about the different brands here, okay? Not all foils are going to be created the same, all right? Uh, these uh, recollection packs are, they're cheaper, okay? They're, they have um, this kind of craft paper um, type of um, foundation. And the uh, gift boutique ones, the ones that come in the 60 pack, it has more of this cardstock. It's a thicker material here, okay? But, that being said, you know, like I said, these are 25 sheets for like, you know, as low as $3.33. But let's look at this a little bit closer, okay? And let's see if I can show it, if we can get it on camera here. But do you see that surface right there? Um, it's a little bit textured, and I don't know if you can see it real closely. I don't think it's picking up that it has this kind of almost like reptilian skin. <laughs> surface. Do you see that where it's kind of scaly? It's almost like someone's like dried skin or it looks like a microscopic view of, uh, so you can see it in this um, area right in here, um, where it's kind of crackled, okay, a little bit. But let's compare this one with the 
Now the recollections one. Okay, look at the reflective quality on these ones. This one's almost like blown glass or something like this. This one's a little bit more kind of, I don't know, it has a softer kind of uh, frosted look to it, right? This one's going to be more non-porous than this one, okay? So it's going to have different characteristics as far as the way that it takes certain types of inks, specifically like the, the Brilliance inks, okay? Um, one of them is going to be a little bit more porous so that you do get a little bit of penetration with certain colors, okay? Now, the Brilliance inks um, are going to be different from black, white, and gold, okay? This white one, I'm guessing that um, to make this type of white pigment ink, it's probably some sort of chalk base, you know, that is being mixed with whatever pigment binder is in there. In this case, it's a water-based um, binder. This one right here is probably some sort of ashy type of thing. I'm guessing that's how they make, you know, ground these pigments to make this one. And the metallics are different, too. Um, uh, the metallics are going to be a little bit slipperier. When I use um, an impression in gold, I find that it's almost thicker on here so that when I'm using it against especially these really super um, chromed out um, glossy uh, cardstocks, you have to be careful about sliding. So when you're making an impression, nothing's getting pressed into the surface of this. It's all surface oriented. So if you have kind of this floating layer of uh, ink on here, when you come into contact with something, it's not going anywhere. So it's going to be a different type of feel than stamping, you know, something onto cardstock where you get a lot of that moisture being absorbed into the paper and then you lift it off and you have this complete transfer of media to surface. On this one right here, it, it, the, the more solid image you get, um, you have to be careful when you're lifting or when you're lowering down so that you don't skew it because it's easy to do it because you're talking about kind of a slippery thick ink it's almost like paint you know when you're using um, these uh, pigment inks and then when you lift off if you lift off too soon you can get this kind of vacuum effect uh, I call it fish eyeing where you have this you know it's it's if I had kind of paint on my finger like that it's going to be different than doing like a I don't know fingerprint type of thing you know with a piece of you know <clears throat> regular ink onto, you know, a matte paper or something like this. If I have a thick layer of paint on my finger and I go like this and I pull it off real soon, that ink is going to want to pull and kind of have this magnetic type of effect on these types of surfaces like this. The more non-porous you have, the more of that effect you can possibly get. So, you know, when if a lot of you have um, a lot of, you know, some different foils in your paper supplies already. One thing that I would recommend to you, you know, when you're uh, approaching um, some scenes, and I hope you do try this out because it's going to give your um, kind of stamping characteristic looks to any of your existing stamps, I think a completely different look, and it goes up exponentially when you're stamping on these different types of surfaces, if you're used to just stamping all on like a matte white cardstock, you know, and doing things the same way. Word stamps look completely different in gold or something like that, or white over, you know, a dark blue foil or something like that. There's just, you can extend kind of the, um, the expression for all of your existing stamps um, just by changing media and surface that you're using them on. So it's just so exciting to see um, imagery that you're so used to seeing, you know, over time used in a different way and to give you a completely different look. And in my opinion, a really, you know, potentially dynamic look with the amount of light that reflects off of these types of surfaces right here. So, okay, so, so you know, that being said, um, when you're getting around to trying some different media out there, I'd recommend trying it on your existing foils out there. Or you can pick up some of these cheap packs of foils like I did and do some experimenting with them. Um, they're, they're cheap enough to experiment with, okay? All right, now here's the thing. Um, a lot of times when people say, I've experimented and it will never dry, mine doesn't dry, I know that they didn't use Brilliance pads, which I 
always recommend on my uh, videos, especially if you're using it the same way, because I know that these ones right here, they dry in five seconds. So, you know, and every time I ask, did you use the brilliance pads? 100% of the times when someone said they had incompatibilities with, you know, media and surface, no one has ever re replied, you know, what they used, okay? I'm guessing they didn't use it because it, it would have dried otherwise um, because it's dried on everything that I've used it on because these ones have been designed to do that, okay? But that being said, okay, let's grab one of the Hero Hues, okay? And this one is an oil-based, just a traditional oil-based um, white pigment ink, okay? Let's try it on the somewhat, you know, semi-porous surface. When I say porous, in, that's in comparison to, you know, the more mirrored, super glossy, you know, coated um, stock of the Gift Boutique um, brand of uh, foils, okay? All right, so if I use this on here, one of the things I'd like to do is I uh, like to do some different cloud formations. I think it's really fun, and I think it gives it a really good organic look, okay? A lot of different pigment inks will never dry on here, but here's the thing that I found with um, Hero Hues, you know, this pigment ink right here. I don't know if it's going to be working with every single pigment ink out there, okay? But if you experiment around like this and just try something out, you might be really surprised, okay? And you might be surprised um, because of what you've heard, but also maybe what you've tried, but you might have tried it just, you know, with one brand of something or one color, tried it out and it didn't work, where it would work just fine with a different brand or brand compatibility or sometimes color compatibility too, okay? Maybe the white works like this just fine and the Hero Hues, I don't know, do they, do they have a gold and silver pads? Maybe it doesn't work with the metallics, I don't know. But it doesn't take long to, you know, try something and just to experiment with it. Let's try um, just a, a little stamp impression of this on here too, okay? All right, I'm not doing a scene or something like this. This is just the way that I would recommend experimenting with your existing media, okay? All right, so I'm going to heat set this here. Oil-based pigment inks, to me, I don't know, I, I wouldn't expect them to dry very quickly, okay? But this is a little bit porous compared to certain other types of oils right here, so let's give it a try. Okay, now I had to keep my heat gun on this a little bit longer than what I'm used to because I'm used to doing it with the Brilliance pads, which are a water-based quick-drying pigment ink, okay? But I don't know if you could see that when it was happening, but you can kind of see this, I don't know, this spreading of the dried area across um, the ink when I was doing that, okay? All right, well, let's bring this down here. Let's see, okay? I'm putting my finger on this, okay, and just seeing... If some of it's coming off. I'm getting a little bit of it on my finger, okay? But just in general, that's not too bad right here, okay? Now naturally, I mean, if you're stamping something on here like that, okay, and applying this color right over the top of it, you're not going to be going into it and just wiping anyway, okay? So, but if you get kind of incidental types of touches on here, okay, you know, it should be fairly set. Now, I, I probably need to dry this one off a little bit longer, okay? I didn't have the, my heat gun over here for too long. One of the things that I like to do is I like to, you know, apply imagery over the top of um, what I call um, blocking out or just having some clouds in the background in my uh, foil pieces, okay? 
Um, I like to apply some white in the background for uh, in the darker foils for my imagery to show up. If I just go black over dark red, okay, like that, it's not going to show up in here, right? So this is applying some types of contrast in here, okay? And then you get your imagery right in there, all right? Now I did a little bit of a... My black pad is really dry right here, so I think I removed some of that white ink in there so that you can see some of that red in there, but it looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Okay, so this kind of surprises me about the Hero Hues. I haven't used that at all, but I was just doing some experimenting earlier, and it worked just fine. Um, I, I, I don't know if I would say just fine, but it worked, okay? I don't know. I did some impressions, too, with something like a Versafine Claire, you know, on foil. You know, I was doing some experiments right over here. And even when heat setting, it just didn't dry. Okay, I was able to kind of wipe it off. All right. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but you can try it because I'm finding the different foils to have different compatibilities with the different media out there. Okay. Now all this can be, you know, when you're stamping your imagery too, like I said, you can use... Um, a specialized ink like a Stazon or a solvent ink that will give you impressions over the tops of foils. But I'm talking about doing kind of further types of um, applications of the media. Specifically, when I'm doing scenes, I'm adding shadows into things, I'm adding highlights, and I like to um, blend my inks around that way, okay? I like to add fog and haze over something like that um, into my pieces. And you need an ink that you're going to be able to do that with, okay? So you can't do that with um, dye-based inks. Dye-based inks on here would be nothing. It'd, it'd be like a water, you know, watercolor pen or something like that. You know, it's not going to stick this because you're not going to be staining the surface again, um, which is necessary, necessary with um, um, dyes, okay? But... All this said, not to confuse things, you could give things a little bit of a base of white ink like this. And then you can stay. I've tried some, uh, one experiment was to stamp an image out and to color it with dye-based inks and stamping into this white right here provided the foundation for some staining to occur. But, okay, let me show you this white pigment ink here. Okay, that's the brilliance ink right there. <clears throat> it's a little bit harder to tell when the white brilliance dries because it doesn't change in look and appearance as much as the black brilliance ink, okay? The brilliant, black brilliance ink, it's real shiny and dark and wet, but then when you um, heat set it, it becomes a little bit more flat and more like a 90% gray or something like that. It's still fairly dark. And... Uh, I don't know, not until you spray seal it um, with an acrylic spray, which you would recommend to do, you know, doing on all foil cards, okay? But anyways, here is the white uh, Brilliance ink right here, and I think that was from that last one here. But this is pretty, it's pretty well set. It's, the feeling when I tap on here, it feels more like a chalk surface, okay? So when I'm... Um, uh, evaporating all of that water-based um, binder in the Brilliance ones. Brilliant sinks are all water-based, okay? It leaves kind of this chalky surface behind, and you're able to stamp impressions into it and whatnot, okay? I'd always recommend, if you're going to lay down some clouds or something like that, um, to heat set it and to dry each layer, okay? So I might stamp some trees over the top of it, and if I want some clouds in the front of these trees or some fog, then I would heat set that. But it's no big deal because it, heat setting the brilliance inks, I mean, it depends on, how, you know, how large your scene is, but, um, you know, it take like five seconds or something like that if it's just one kind of small area. It dries really fast. 
and that's one of the things that these things are designed for, okay? Um, there's other things that I haven't experimented around with too much. The stays on pigment ink. Um, uh, if you're just doing some just straight impressions, you know, you can do that on these different types of surfaces and it'll work just fine. But kind of play around with things and to do some and just do some experiments, okay? I'd recommend um, kind of getting familiar with your impression types of pressures and timing when making uh, your impressions. And if it's one of those things, here's the thing, you know, if you're just think about, okay, I like the look of those foil pieces um, in terms of, uh, I don't know, the look of a card or something that you've seen me do or someone else do. When you're getting, um, and you might not have the pad, so you might be a new pad. So when you're using a brand new pad, there's going to be a lot of ink on, you know, application materials but also on your stamps when you're stamping them out on here. Get familiar. Don't, you don't just do one thing and say, oh my god, I, it slid, you know, it's skewed and it's all blurry. I'm never doing this again, you know. Kind of do, get just pick a piece of foil and do some stamping on it and find your kind of pressure because it's going to be a little bit different than probably what you're used to, you know, um, stays on on Matt cardstock or something like that. That that would be the, like the polar extreme opposite experience of stamping something that has a thicker type of consistency and going into a non-porous, very smooth and slick sealed surface, okay? So you just have to kind of get familiar with it. It's almost like pressing down through some um, kind of thicker paint or something like that. But it's not only just making the impression, okay? You want to hold it down at um, kind of even pressure, but then when you um, make the impression, you're kind of allowing it to stay down a little bit longer. But also when you're lifting, you're lifting a little bit slower, otherwise you can get kind of this vacuuming type of effect at, where um, a lot of the liquid um, uh, medium just kind of vacuums up and it just goes right, stays on your stamp, and that's happened to me before too. And uh, I don't know, it, early on. Now I'm kind of more familiar with that, so I might kind of hold my imagery down a little bit longer. Or if I'm just uncertain about it, I kind of keep my impression on the surface, and I might keep it there for 30 seconds or something like that. So it allows whatever media I'm using to kind of start setting up and to transfer and to make that kind of vacuum seal adherence to... Uh, the surface, you know, especially with something like these super glossy um, card ones, you know. But the more kind of glossy, mirrored, sealed, etc. surface that you're going, you know, using, potentially the more reflective it is in terms of the amount of light that's returned to it. And that makes for a potentially very dynamic stamping surface, and it can bring so much kind of excitement uh, to your cards, but also, like I said, it, it gives your st existing stamps kind of a new voice, and um, just, it really opens up expression for all of those different images out there. You might have some images that you got, you know, you used a lot, and you're kind of tired of using or whatever over the years. You can breathe new life in them, you know, by utilizing them in a new way, and these different types of foils are a really fantastic um, kind of option for you. And I think, you know, one of the things that's happened for me is that when I, start, when I started using um, these different types of uh, media surface combinations like that, and I see some of the results, um, the thing is, is that it really gets the wheels kind of churning and, uh, I don't know, it makes me think about, oh, my, I wonder what this stamp will look like in this usage or this one, or I'll use a different color of foil and I'll think, okay, uh, that looks really cool. But I have this other image, you know, that I'm thinking about when doing it on here. I'm thinking, oh, my God, that would look so cool in this color, a springtime type of thing with, you know, cherry blossoms on it or something like that on this super dynamic foil. And uh, it really starts to open up kind of a lot of doors for other types of uh, compositions that you might want to do. And uh, it might bring to mind other types of word stamps that you have or whatnot. 
And there's also like different combinations of foils too that I haven't really explored too much, you know, in terms of uh, using one foil with the other foil, you know, like a rainbow holographic over the top of, uh, you know, purple foil or something like that, you know, that would be really cool. So, I don't know, there's just all kinds of different possibilities. I hope that you explore um, these different types of uh, maybe less conventional types of stamping surfaces and uh, see what you can come up with. And uh, I don't know, it's just been so much fun um, kind of unlocking some of the uh, different, uh, I don't know, potential secrets of the uh, surfaces, you know, over this last year. And I plan on doing a lot more of that in the future. Foils, uh, iridescent papers, uh, the vellums were really fun. Uh, different types of paint pens and, you know, so on and so forth, you know using uh, the larger paint pens with, you know, I don't know, just different combinations like this. I mean, this would look, look at this type of combination right here on this, you know, so you can think of, you know, I don't know, some cherry blossoms in spring or something like that or something like that. Or, you know, you get the rainbow holographic, you know, surfaces like that. And then you have all these different types of colors that coincide with colors that are all inherently in these types of surfaces right here. It's just, I don't know, the, uh, the possibilities were always endless with just even white cardstock. But when you start using something like this, it's entirely new dynamic and it's so much fun to play around with. So I don't know, play around, uh, ask questions. If you have some, um, Sources, if you're international and you're watching this video and you know where to get different types of um, foil things, please list it down in the comment section. I get comments all the time like, hey, where do you, you know, where can I get some of that rainbow holographic paper in uh, the United Kingdom or something like that? Or where can I get it in Australia? And sometimes I look online and I'm able to uh, source some, uh, you know, places, but I'm not out in these different types of countries, so I don't know where to get these things like this. Um, even Canada or something like that. Maybe you have some good sources for foils. Uh, different types of pads that you know can work on there, you know. Um, I don't know. Please list it in the comments section um, for, I don't know, your fellow stampers in your uh, different countries, you know, to help them out, uh, you know, and locating and uh, sourcing, you know, hopefully some good materials at good prices. Okay, so thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And thanks as always for tuning into the Stampscapes channel.